I learned a lot from my grandfather. He was born in 1877, so I made him uh, 99 years old. He was a medicine man. He taught, some, he taught me about how to care for buffalo. Taught me a lot of things about the buffalo being sacred. But he told me one time, Tatanga, Monagikta, you will see that. You will see the rebirth of the buffalo coming home. Um, Tatanka Oyate, which means Buffalo Nations. And so the buffalo has always been a part of who we are. It is part of the land. We are part of the land and it is part of us. And since settlers arrived here in our, in our traditional territory, in our lands, they have tried to conquer us. And if they couldn't conquer us, they tried to kill us. And so the buffalo is in fact a main source of who we were. And so the first thing they did is they displaced us, then they confined us to very um, small areas of living and they slaughtered the buffalo. So the buffalo was our life. It provided everything for us. And so what they did is they took away our food first and they actually almost annihilated the buffalo in this whole continent. And so millions of buffalo were killed. They had no use for the buffalo. We had use for the buffalo. That's how we maintained our culture, our language, our way of life, and our nomadic way of life. Wherever the buffalo went, we went. So we always traveled, and we knew where they were, and we were able to you know, get buffalo so we could sustain ourselves as people. To the Indian, the buffalo is a symbol of God. Every part of it was used. In, uh, it, reservation era, the prayers that were made, like you'll hear in the Sioux country, they talk about the ghost dance and how that was, uh, they were going to bring back the buffalo. Well, that's almost 200 years ago now, so today, this is an answered prayer. These, my relatives here in Mosquito, when they open those truck doors tomorrow, those 200-year-old prayers, they're going to come to fruition in that time tomorrow. So it, it's, it's hope, you know, it's the hope of our people. Well, I received a phone call from Grant and he, you know, expressed, you know, with the interpreter center that's coming. He said, I think it would be a great idea if we made application to Elk Island and uh, see if we can bring home bison. And I said, go for it. And so it was two years in the making. I, I, I think it was like, I, I, we got the cattle in one, the one year and uh, I told the chief, well, next year I'm gonna get you bison. And that the chief said, that would be so awesome, Grant, and then. Just took the baby steps. Uh, we took our elders, uh, we took community members to Elk Island, uh, did a tour over there. Um, and then about a year later, uh, we were notified that uh, we were one of the four nations in Western provinces that were gonna be receiving um, the buffalo. So once you said that, well, I, I, I better get on this and, uh, you know, uh, seek places. And Elk Island was the very first place that I, I went to. We did our prayers last year for all the blessings that we, what we needed that day for to make sure the buffalo were, you know, load on s safely. To our surprise, after we did all the ceremony and then we smelled the vehicles, and uh, the buffalo just loaded on. Those guys were surprised. They just jumped out and uh, they actually uh, took some pictures of them coming in. The, the two bulls, the three bulls were loaded on first and then they, they all followed in different compartments. So uh, then once they were loaded on, I told the driver, move your vehicle ahead and then I smudged all the, the transport all around and uh, everything what we needed to do. When we were smudging, I noticed that when we were smudging around, 
be quiet now. It like literally just, just quiet. Quiet. And we can we can go close and smudge. Usually when you see they said that when you go close to it they just like you know make a lot of noise and but when we went there they just settled down. And we just went around. And that was good. Yep. And then we followed them all the way home. after the buffalo, the buffalo will look after you. That's the, that's the mentality that, that's what my grandma used to tell me. You look after the land, the land will look after you. And uh, those are the teachings from our elders. Just like the buffalo, it, it pertains to the buffalo too. The buffalo, you look after them, you feed them good, Maintain year-round. It's a year-round job. Uh, there's such a sense of pride. The this last week, the texts, the phone calls, the you know the photos that are being taken out there, the video. It, it's an unbelievable sense of pride for the entire nation. It's exciting, and I think that this is a great time to be young in this nation, in, um, in, in uh, Mosquito, because the young people are going to witness a very historic moment. And, you know, the one day they'll be the elders, and one day they'll be telling the story of when the buffalo came home. First Nations people, uh, we're not the apex of the country, but the country, we're a part of the country. So everything that happens around us, our relatives with four legs or our relatives with wings or those ones that swim, those ones that crawl, you know, as they're getting stronger, our people are getting stronger. It gives us a good health, well-being, strong mind, strong heart, and a, a spirit to carry him. His spirit, your spirit helps other people. You know, because he's going to be able to feed uh, the world. The world, where, 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 as we know it, you know. So I, I always say, you know, I give a lot of thanks to the Buffalo for helping me.